Hello, so my name is Pokina Pup and this is my tutorial on how to get your colour selector models and pop them into VR chat. Woo! Um, if you're looking for a tutorial on sort of RGB automatically colour changing models, um, I've got that down below, so please go ahead and check that out. But this one is for if you want to be able to pick and choose what colour your model is in each world. Um, I know some people go to a red world and they want red tints in their eyes or whatever, so that's what this will be able to show you. So, I'm already assuming that you've got your model into Unity, so I'm going to need you to go ahead and click on your model, scroll down to playable layers on the right, and see if you have an FX layer. If you do, great. If you don't, you'll need to stay here, and I'll show you how to do those. But you need to also check if you have a menu and parameters layer down here. If you don't, and if you're missing any of them, we'll go through how to create all of those right now. If you're not, please skip forward to the timestamp on the screen. So, if you are missing these, pick a simple place. For example, I like to put it in, I have a folder called Expressions, and I have a folder called um, Controller, and in Controller is where I put my FX, and in Expressions is where I put my menu and parameter. So just click wherever is convenient for you, right click, um, click Create, and Animate a Controller. This is called the FX layer, so call it FX, that's what I'll be calling it today. Once you've made this, click on your model, find the FX part, and drag and drop that FX layer somewhere in there. If you can't do that, just click the little X first, make sure it's a none, and then drag it in. Next, we're going to do menu and parameters. So, right click in assets or wherever is convenient, click create VR chat avatars, and you'll be able to create a menu and a parameter one here. So, create one of each. Okay, so once again, click on your model, find the menu and parameter slots, and drag in menu and drag in parameters. Okay, so this next step is so important. Please, for the love of God, make sure you have a duplicate model. If you do not, you're gonna ruin your life and get stuck in like this horrible pose. You can't get it out of here. So please, God, just right click on your model and click duplicate. For some reason, if you try to do animations and whatnot, not on a duplicate model, it can get stuck in bike pose and then it makes it so hard to put clothes on and all of that. It is just a whole shebang and it takes a little while to get it out of it. Just do not put yourself through that whole situation, so make sure you have a duplicate. Okay, so now we've got our duplicate, uh, we're able to move on, woohoo! So now we can go ahead and click on our second model, and there you'll see a couple of tabs um, that you're going to want throughout the duration of this. You're going to want the animator and the animator tabs. If you don't have the animator window, you need to click on window up here at the top. Scroll down to animation and the animator tab here. So get that one in. And the next one is this animation tab down the bottom. Click on the little three dots on the right. Go down and then add tab, animation tab. This is going to be so useful going forward. So you might already have this, but if you don't, that's where you go about and find it. So now we can get to prepping. Welcome back anybody who have an FX layer. All you missed is that we are needing a duplicate model, which I'm assuming you guys already know how to do. Woohoo! So I like to do all the prep before we start creating the animations. So the first thing you're going to do is click on your model and we're going to go into parameters down at the bottom. And we're going to want to add a float parameter. So click add, call it whatever you want. So I call it hue and add to, uh, and select float. <laughs> it is case sensitive, so just be aware of that. And just to save ourselves any confusion, go back onto your model FX layer, open that up, and we can go to parameters here, and you want to add one in here, also called hue, and that needs to be a float too. So happy days, we've added both of those. Um, and one thing I forgot to mention is just in the parameters menu that you are in previously, if you want to keep the colour when you change world, just make sure the two boxes next to it are ticked here. So just a heads up. Okay, so once again, click on your duplicate model and then click on the animation tab. Woo! Click create and name it whatever you want. So I call it hue. Just keep everything uniform. Click record. So if, for example, you're doing the hair, um, there's a few different ways you're going to want to do this. Today we'll go through the eyes. But it's all going to have the same concept. So you want to go find whatever material it is. So I'm going into my head. I'm able to find the eyes in here. You're going to want to make sure that the shader is unlocked. So I like to go my model, face, eyes, and then I found it just here. So that's mine. Once the shader is unlocked, happy days. You'll be able to see the material and edit it. So there'll be a few ways of doing this. 
and you're going to be one of looking for two things that you may have to change but we'll get on to that shortly so the first and most common thing you change is the uh, color adjust and hue shift that's the most commonly seen one um, most items have this but please before doing this please scroll down and have a look under your special effects and see if there's anything in emissions if your emission ticks this box uh, box is ticked it normally means there's something in there and you'll need to change them but i will show you how to do that just shortly um, normally it's just like a little highlight on the tip of your hair or in your eyes but it is still important if you want anything to look uniform so so starting with the color adjust you want to make sure the color adjust box is ticked the shoe shift is ticked and i don't know if you need to have this tick but i always have so i would recommend it make sure the hue replace is ticked so you're going to want to drag the box from left to right to left make sure record is running and you'll see that it's popped up over there on the left scroll down to your special effects and you'll want to do the exact same in all of your emission layers making sure obviously the hue shift box is ticked if it is one that looks like it should be ticked if it's just a little white highlight i wouldn't worry about it but if it's anything with any color in you're going to want to go ahead and do these so once you've done all of those you'll see them all over there on the left in the animation box and you can unclick record next in this little box here you're going to want to change it to 100 and we're going to do something very very similar hit record but this time when we slide the sliders we want to slide them just to one and then leave them there so go do your color adjust and then go down and do all of your emissions if you have emissions on okay perfect so you can see them all in the little box over on the left here we can unpress record super duper that is our animation if you want to test it you can press play and obviously you can see it going through all the colors here so it's clearly able to identify it so you're happy woohoo if you ever want to add hair or anything you will have to add it on this animation so um, that will sort of be attached to your duplicate model so please keep your duplicate model just hide it um, but it'll make changing your animations a lot easier so we can now hide our duplicate model go back to our main model so we're happy that we're going to be using that beautiful it's kept its pose happy days so click on your model again go back into fx layer um, in layers you want to click plus and add a layer called q scroll down and then set the weight to one you want to then go ahead and drag your animation in. so if you can't find it just search q in the box there's your animation drag and drop it in and where it says motion time and you just tick the little parameter box and select q here you also just need to make sure that in your animation so if you click on it that loop time is turned off this is quite important so just make sure that's turned off okay so go back onto your model scroll down and go into your menu open that up uh, click add control open it up call it something like hue that's what i've been calling that you can add a picture but make sure that it's set to radial puppet you can ignore the top parameter but in the second parameter you're going to want to select hue float um, very important that you do that if you don't then it's definitely not going to work that's how you get the sort of menu up finally before you click upload on your model make sure that there's nothing in this top controller box here um, sometimes little bits pop up in here i've always found it's best to make sure that it's empty but if you're not sure just make a duplicate of your entire um, sort of project and it will work a charm so that's how you do it you can upload it and it's gonna look something like this um you can obviously pick whatever color you want it'll stay locked on after you press trigger so if you enjoyed this tutorial it is helpful um hit like down below you'll catch me live over on twitch i stream most weekend mornings and a lot of weekend evenings we play a lot of vr beat saber obviously vr chat that's what we're doing right now um so i really hope that works if you're looking for a rainbow color automatically change and shift I have a tutorial for that down below if you want to go check that out. I have both on my model. Um, but I really hope this was helpful and I hope you have a lot of fun creating your own color changing models. Pokina Pup signing off.